Yeah, boy! Well, here she is. My new Stabycraft 2750 centre cab. It's the first centre cabin ever built by Stabycraft. It's been 18 months in design, six months in build, and prior to that, it's had vested in it my 20 years worth of experience in trailer boat fishing and sport fishing. It's all gone into a whole bunch of intricate detail on this boat. There's so much technology and accessories, so stick around, because I really want to show you through this boat. It's awesome. Well, your boating starts by getting your boat down to the water and this is the biggest boat that I've ever towed and I've got to say it tows better than any boat and that's testament to the job Hoskins have done with the trailer and it's got CM trailer equipment on which I insist on all my trailers. We can run you through all of the details on the setup of the trailer but right now I'm going to get this bad boy on the water. So here she is, my Stabycraft 2750 centre cabin. Now being a centre cabin design, it's uh, allowed us to create this nice walking area. Well more than a walking area, we've made it wide enough that you can fish your whole way through it. And crucial to that is the bail rail height. We actually modelled this up in the factory, I grabbed a fishing rod and we've rolled it in slightly so it's sitting right there on your hip so it's a good, safe, practical fishing angle. Um, you'll notice it steps up here onto a casting platform if you're going to hook out a stick bait. Now to achieve this being nice and clean, we've tucked the anchor underneath which goes right in nicely to our stress-free winch. We've managed to fit a couple of storage lockers up here, sort of things like rope. Uh, we've got power up the front here, two plugs for our electric reels if we're poker fishing up the front here. Oh, and also we've got a rail blazer of rod holders now. They just click in and it allows me some versatility. I can put a rod holder uh, wherever I want it and if it's in the way, well, I just move it. Simple as that. So we've got some fixed rod holder storage here as well. Some nice seating to make it comfortable. Let's get down and uh, have a look at the back of the boat. There's some pretty cool stuff down there. And you'll see there's plenty of easy access. Um, we've put in this big drain here so any waves, spray, anything that comes over the front is just going to be dumped out. It's not going to end up in the cockpit. We step down here. Oh, before we do, We've got um, lighting, we've got such an impressive, comprehensive array of Hello Marine lighting on the boat. You're going to have to either click on the link or wait to the end of the video to check out how we've set up the lighting. You'll see all that um, lit up tonight, it's pretty special. Um, down here onto the deck, um, we've gone with Marine Deck, it's a compressed cork product and it's incredible. I know it looks like teak, it gives the boat a really sharp finish, we're really impressed with the way that it's been done but it's really hard wearing, yet it's easy on your feet. So I can wear bare feet on this boat all day, no trouble at all. Doesn't radiate heat back up, and it cleans up wonderfully. So if you're really thinking about having something a little bit special in terms of looks, but also durability, hard wearing, this Marine Deck by Bailey Marine is awesome stuff. Next over here, we've got this big boy. It's a 300 litre icy tech, which gives us plenty of cold storage, but it also forms the centre station of the whole cockpit. So when we open it up in here, um, what I've done is I've gone for like a modular system where I've got um, fish bins in here that have got lids on them, they're all stackable. I can fit nine of these guys in here. So we can take our, our baits out when we're ready to do a bit of uh, bottom fishing, snapper fishing, and we've designed it so they fit neatly in there. You can take the lid off, you've got access to your bait. At the end of the day, if you're changing spots, clip the lid back on, and your uh, bait can all sit in there nicely, uh, yet not get all that dirty fishy bait stuff onto your catch. Now, while I'm up here also, we've got uh, an outside station. Now, when I'm fishing, this is where I'm spending most of my time. I've got a, a, a full set of uh, controls back here where I can drive the boat. I've got a uh, lever to turn the outboard. I've got an autopilot. I've got a control, which controls my Navnet TZ Touch uh, at a finger touch, but I've got a remote screen here anyway, and I get full touchscreen control. Just an iPad and a waterproof, life-proof case. Sits here on a Railblazer starport. Another use for the Railblazer. And I've got full control of my entire boat from here. 
at probably one of the most fishable spots on the boat. Which brings us to the business end of the boat, the bait station. Now, a heck of a lot of thought has gone into the layout of this. We've got uh, some more Railblazer star ports here so we can add extra storage and accessories where we need them. We've got a Railblazer drink holders, but also sinker holders, things like rubber bands you need quick access to, they're right at your fingertips. This neat little design here, my rigging thread, I'm constantly rigging up bait so I can just pull it straight out, grab the thread that I need. I've got my bait needles here, six slots, so plenty of knives. You can keep your uh, scissors and cutters, all of that sort of stuff at a fingertip. Now, the bait board itself, now it's this nice hard wearing plastic, yet it doesn't dull your knives. Now, one of my big beefs with uh, bait stations is they've normally got a front lip, which is great for stopping the stuff spilling into your boat, but you can't get your knife under to skin a fish. So to get around that, we've raised this and we've created a channel, so all the rubbish runs neatly to the back of the boat, through a nice drain, down overboard through a tube, so you're not getting blood and guts splattering over your boat, yet it remains functional. So while you've got all your baits and blood and guts up here, over here we've got this high-tech plastics tray now, that there is for your clean, dry tackle storage. On a rocking boat, you're always looking for somewhere to put something down where it's not going to slide away. So I can have all of my tackle, jigs, lures, tackle boxes there, nice and clean. Bait and stuff over there, yet I'm central. A few drink holders always come in handy. And of course, when you're rigging up your rod, um, quite often, rod on the rod holder, it's hard to reach the rod tip. Here we go, we just rip out another one of our Railblazer rod holders. We can grab any rod that we like and all of a sudden it's at a nice handy level you can reach the rod tip you can do all of your rigging tie your jig on your bait your lure whatever and they sit right out of the way uh, when I'm bait and switch fishing that's actually the rod I use for bait and switch that can sit there ready to go pitch a bait out I really want to show you this bit the tackle drawer a lot of thought gone in here so we've got a bit of a facade at the front here so any water that leaks is going to go through and onto the floor so everything stays dry. We've made this fit the Oshia fluorocarbon packet size. So at the moment here I've got uh, 40, 50, 60, 80 and 100 pound fluorocarbon. It's all right here, I can just pull it out, the amount of litre I want, snip it off, I've got access to my cutters. Um, I've had the Shimano tackle box trays fit in here. Nice little um, scallops taken out so you can get your finger in, pull out the tackle you want to use, pop it onto the tray there. Uh, and on this side here, as well as my tools, I've got all the stuff that I'm wanting to use all of the time, things like sabikis, sinkers, that sort of stuff. Speaking of sinkers, look at this. You're always looking for a space for your uh, heavy sinkers. And here I've got my pooker sinkers, teardrop sinkers, big ball sinkers. Got things like spare dive weights, downrigger weight as well, and that just slides neatly back into that space. We've used the guys at uh, High Tech Plastics to custom make these plastic containers to fit all the spaces, so we're utilising every little inch on this boat. And uh, while I'm down here, this is our comprehensive plumbing system. Three tuna tubes, pretty simple, on or off. We've got a pickup Venturi scoop which feeds the, the valve chest. We've got a drain to drain the live bait tank out and we've got a pickup pump that services the live bait tank. Then over here, we've got another valve chest which is fed by two big 1600 gallon per hour pumps. So I can either have one or two pumps feeding this and I can divert the water wherever it's needed. To the tuna tubes, to a single tuna tube, to two tuna tubes, to all three, or into the live bait tank. And I've also got a redundant valve on the end here so I can always plug in a hose if I need an extra or spare deck wash. A lot of thoughts gone into that and it works a treat. I'm just going to show you my tuna tubes. So they're hidden away under this uh, cover here which just pops under the combing. Uh, we've modelled them to fit the biggest tuna that we're likely to use so we actually got a tuna, we, we put them in the bits of tube, we made sure their tail didn't get too close to the surface because they kick around and spray you. They work superbly well and pretty tough with them. Of course for all of these pumps and accessories and stuff that we're running we need plenty of power. So we've got the Exide marine batteries these ones are the deep cycle batteries, I've got them running in parallel here, so I've got three of the biggest batteries I could get is my house bank, and uh, over here I've got another separate uh, battery for my start battery, and they supply more than enough power, get plenty of charge off of the E-Tech, and uh, speaking of the E-Tech, we can't leave the back of the boat without talking about this bad boy, I've gone for the single 300 horse this time around, Already I'm noticing a better fuel economy on this, a much bigger, much heavier boat than my last. 
I'm actually at cruising, I'm getting about 13 litres an hour less, and at trolling speed, I can push the boat along at eight knots, and I'm doing just a little over six litres an hour, which is pretty impressive. It's given me more range for less fuel. Everything that they say they can do on the packet, they can do, but we're gonna go into in depth later on about the G2. You can click on the link to see what I think about them and what I've found about running my G2. But right now we're just gonna carry on and, oh, outriggers. So these are my real rods outriggers. They're uh, telescopic and I've got a system where they just sort of pop on. You really do wanna see how I've taken so much time and effort in designing an outrigger system for this boat. So if that interests you, make sure you click on the link and check it out or wait to the end of the video where we're gonna give all of the insights on everything that you've seen on the boat. But we've gotta keep moving through this great big cockpit, heaps of room up here to the cabin. So because of course we've got a walk around boat, all that access up to the front, we've narrowed down the cabin. So to utilize the space as good as we can, I've come up with this design. I haven't actually got a name for it yet. It's like a double bolster seat. So when these uh, bolsters are up, you can have uh, one of your passengers as a leaning post facing back, another facing forward, or you can just fold the both bolsters down. It turns into a seat. Either either you can put two guys on them and they're on this shark suspension system, which really is incredible. They've got this uh, shock system here. Um, I've got a little pump that I've got clipped onto the side here. I can pump more or less air in there depending on how much shock absorbance I want, or I can even raise the height of my seat. So that's nifty, it all works on an air shock. And it's got this sort of scissor frame. And so not only does it cushion you on the way down, it cushions you on the way up. So there's no jarring when you come back up. And of course the uh, Stabycraft hull, you get that legendary ride anyway, but it just, well, it's like floating on a cloud is what my mate said the other day when we were out in the rough stuff. So. The shark seats are excellent. I've got full forward back slide, just with a lift of a lever, wiggle around 180 degrees so I can look back at my lures when I'm game fishing. Just by having these uh, swivel seats, the bench seat allows me to have a couple of passengers and utilize this space. Speaking of the space, I'm standing on some of it right now. If we open this guy up here, we've got an icy tech bin in there. The lid just opens up nicely for you. Just another little nice design feature. So you've got quick access to um, any refreshments you need in a hurry. Um, but if you don't need refreshments, uh, I had three dive bags the other day um, full of dive gear. It's a wet locker. I've got a pump down in there. So if you throw your wet dive gear, bottles, anything in there, you can just pump it all out or undo the bung, drain everything right to the back of the boat. So this space really gets well utilised. Also forward, I've gone for space over comfort. Now, yes, you can sleep up there at a pinch if you want to, but I didn't want to make the boat too comfortable. Reason is, I go game fishing, my mates go to sleep, I do everything. We get a marlin on, they jump up out of the bed, wind in the marlin, then they go back to sleep to leave me to do everything else. So, I've gone for storage over comfort up here. Everything here is all on gas struts, so I've got plenty of room for all my fishing tackle and everything. Um, Gas struts the whole way around. You'll see they've done just a beautiful job of rigging the electronics. This is the brains, the brains to my super grunty uh, Furuno sounder, digital radar. We've got amplifiers, all sorts of wizardry going on under there, which is the brains that runs my electronics suite. Now we'll just go through the electronics briefly, but we're going to cover this all in detail. If again, if you want to click on the link to see how we've rigged the electronics and what we've gone for and how we use them, do that. But uh, just quickly, unit in VHF. I've also got a spare unit in handheld as well to give me two forms of communication. I've got my Fusion stereo system. That's running an amplifier, six seven inch speakers, subwoofer up the front, subwoofer down the back. It cranks. Uh, my Evinrude gauges, I can do all sorts with my E-Tech there. It's got auto eye trim as one of the features on it. Push a button and it trims the boat to the optimum revs and burns the least amount of fuel. My Furuno autopilot, which has got some revolutionary technology we'll touch on later, uh, which talks beautifully to my 14 inch TZ touch. I've got my trim tabs over here. If you've got dirty fingers, I can do everything on my Furuno on this remote control here. All around the boat I've got these power sockets USB ports which are great for charging things like your cell phones GoPros everything now is powered by USB plus we've got the DC ports for things like spotlights I think 
they're all around the boat. I think I counted up. We've got 16 of them. They're waterproof. They're able to stay out of the way. And uh, oh, while I'm up the front here, um, life jacket storage. Um, always carry plenty of life jackets. We've got 14 of these Ocean Star Marine life jackets on board. Uh, we've got EPIRB, readily accessible. Down here in the locker, we've got our fire extinguisher, flares, and a full comprehensive first aid kit. But I tell you what, what your most important piece of safety equipment is, is your boat. It's your boat and knowing how to use it. Staying in your boat and staying afloat, well, you shouldn't need all of this sort of stuff. But anyway, if you need it, we've got it. Now the last little bit of boat to look at is up on top here. Now if we start at the back, you can see the rocket launcher. I've managed to fit 11 rod holders here, but they're not crammed in. We've actually put rods and reels in there and we've strategically placed them so they don't bang together. So I can keep 11 rods up there, a couple of aerials. I've got the spotting frame. It's folded into the upright position at the moment. Excellent spot to jump up there, give you a good hold so you can spot, look for birds and just a nice place to hang out actually when you're trolling. And we've got a solar panel here. Really important uh, when we've got our batteries so much demand and load goes on them. This is constantly trickle charging those big XI batteries in our house bank, supplying all of the fruit we've got on this boat. And uh, speaking of all the stuff that we've got on the boat, it's a uh, pretty special rig, so we made sure we got full comprehensive cover with our mates at Club Marine, so that's something to think about. And, well, I can't finish without saying cheers to our mates at ITM, which put the ITM in the ITM fishing show and make all of this possible. And of course the boat just looks slick, doesn't it? Great lines, but the sign writing, Halvo Signs have done an amazing job. They've wrapped virtually the whole boat. Paul's worked with us really well on some of our design ideas. He's incorporated it all and wow, you can see how good she looks. And I can't sign off without saying the design innovation that's gone into this boat by Stabycraft is incredible. You can look at the details on this design innovation and all the detailed little bits of this boat by just following the links or check it all out along with all of our fishing action on ultimatefishing.tv.